Hey guys, I'm all back again. I've been using the Google Pixel 7 and the Google Pixel 7a for more than a month. And today I'm going to tell you why you should get the Google Pixel 7 instead. The differences between the two phones is only $100. But I think with the 7, you're getting more for the money. So the biggest downfall with the Google Pixel 7a is the 18 watt fast charging. And on one of the days of using my Google Pixel 7a, I started my day off at 5%. You would think that throughout the day, just me plugging it in, it should reach 100% at some point. And this is the caveat that no one really talks about. So with the Pixel 7a, I find that when you're using your phone and charging it at the same time, it takes a really long time to fully charge. So in order to achieve that, full charge in an hour and a half, you should not be using your phone at all. I personally use my phone sporadically throughout the day, even if I'm working. And on this particular day, when I start off at 5%, I find a bad thing that I never truly make it back to 100%. I've used the OnePlus 10T in the past where I can charge my phone in 20 minutes and reach 100% with the 120 watt fast charger. Even with the Galaxy S23 at 25 watt fast charging, it takes me about an hour to fully charge the phone. I can use the phone when I'm driving, listening to music, watching YouTube, but just web surfing. Me using the phone, it still charges itself just fine within that hour. And even when I had the Google Pixel 7, the difference between the 7 and 7a is only 2 watt. You get 20 watt fast charging with the Google Pixel 7, but I don't recall having to be glued to the wire all day like I am. With, with the Pixel 7a. So in that sense, the difference between 20 watt and 18 watt is pretty drastic. For example, when I use the Google Pixel 7a while driving, I have Bluetooth music on, I have Google Maps, the cable is just plugged directly into the phone, and I find that I'll be lucky if it increases a percent or two. And if I use the seven and a half while it's charging, it either holds the charge or it actually loses a percent or two while I'm driving. And the reason for that is because the seven A gets really hot and overheats, especially if you're just launching a few apps at once. Ironically, with the regular Google Pixel 7, it has the same exact Google Tensor G2 chip, but I find that the faster charging on the regular Google Pixel 7 and also the thermal management is a bit more efficient. So the regular Google Pixel 7 actually charges better and it doesn't overheat as often as the 7a. So in terms of battery life for the 7a, I get 9 to 10 hours on a regular day. When I wake up at 6 a.m., I know it's going to last me until 3 p.m. That is my typical experience and even Google tells me so whenever I pull down the notification sheets. It literally tells me phone will last me until 3 p.m. So nine hours of battery life right there. In a company with a terrible charging speed, it makes it extremely challenging to make it through a full regular day. And some of the other additional downfall with the Google Pixel 7a, it's a back is made of plastic, so the material is less premium. Although since it's plastic, it's less likely to shatter if you drop the phone. It caps off at 128 gigabyte of storage, so if you want anything 256 or higher, you have to get the Google Pixel 7. The cameras in general across both phones are pretty similar, but there are some minor differences with the Pixel 7a. You get a wider, wide angle camera in the front and back. You only get two mics compared to the three on the regular Google Pixel 7. And also on paper, it's just both phones are similar resolution and just the fact that the Pixel 7a is slightly smaller, it does have a higher PPI or pixel per density. That doesn't really mean much to an average person, unless you have a microscope and you're staring at it. No one really cares about pixel per density, especially since both of these phones are full HD displays. Pixel 7a, you are also getting Gorilla Glass 3. In theory, it is more scratch resistant compared to the Victus on the regular Google Pixel 7. Ironically, I would still recommend using a screen protector though, because I managed to get a lot of scratches on my 7a, just under normal usage. Now, in terms of the Google Pixel 7, for the $100 difference, you do get the 1400 nits peak brightness, which makes a huge difference if you're outside and under the sun. So if you're ever in direct sunlight, you can see it's much better. The 7a, I feel like you can have about half the nits. It is significantly darker if you're using the phone outside. I mean, you can still see it, but it does take a little bit more effort. And the regular 7 and the S23 is a much better viewing experience. So just try to avoid direct sunlight of anything if you go for the 7a. And with the regular Google Pixel 7, I find that the battery lasts longer by a little bit. I get 10 to 11 hours of battery life. It even has reverse wireless charging that I never use. But you have one of those buds that can wirelessly charge and you don't have your charger for whatever reason, you can use your phone to do that. But the regular Google Pixel 7a does not have this feature. 
And like I mentioned earlier, the 20 watt fast charging on the Google Pixel 7 is truly fast charging. So you can charge from zero to 100% in an hour and 15 minutes or so. And you can still use your phone as you're charging it. I don't find it to be struggling or... And just a regular Google Pixel 7, it is more premium materials, glass front and back. And I think it is an overall more well-built phone. Let me know what you guys think in terms of the differences between the 7 and the 7a. On paper, both phones look identical. After using both phones for over a month, I think it is a no-brainer to get the regular 7 for the $100 difference. Pixel 7a is $600. List price, it often goes on sale for $500. Sometimes retailers like Amazon give out $100 gift cards. And whenever the 7 go on sale, the 7a also go on sale. So list price of 7A is $500, but there are many cases where you can get it for $400 or $450. So either way, the difference is it's still $100. I did leave some links in the description below if you guys are interested in purchasing them. But in general, I'm all for saving money and getting the most value. And if you don't mind charging your phone all day, the 7A is a great price for the power. The regular Google Pixel 7 is a bit pricier, but I think you do get more for your money. That's all I have for you guys. Remember to like and subscribe. Please check out my one month review for more details if you want deeper analysis on the Google Pixel 7a.